Welcome to Fast Break, an African-based basketball podcast where we have entertaining, thought-provoking and unfiltered conversations on the game and culture of basketball. Welcome to it, welcome to it. Welcome to the Fast Break. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back like we never left. Um, let me get my panelists on you. Let me get my guys on you. You know, I actually wanted to start the show with a joke, like, you know, Two Lakers, a Boston Celtic, and a Golden State Warrior walk into a bar. Get it? You know what I mean? Walk into a... Oh, we're under Cancun and stuff. Shazzo! 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 Shazzo under Laker for life. Um, We've got Shaz Alaness under Laker for life. Uh, you got to embrace it. <laughs> Rufaro Warinda, the Boston Celtic. And Brian somebody, of course, donning his Laker. Brian, I don't think I've seen you on the show without a, a Laker jersey. You've really been ripping. But uh, I'm saying, gentlemen, dog. like I said, uh, two Lakers, a Boston Celtic, and a Golden State Warrior walk into a bar or jump on fast break. How you guys doing? How you guys feeling? That's a trick question. But how you guys <laughs> far off, far off feeling alive? Uh, isn't it? Feeling like- no, delayed flights, bro. My flights are delayed. It's been raining now. It's been a bit tough. My flight's currently late. So maybe I'll catch some sunshine with you guys tomorrow. Um, some people are calling this the Cancun episode. Um, yeah, I'm out here. No one has I've embraced that. it. This is the first I'm hearing it. If I knew that was it, I wouldn't have been here. Ain't nobody told me that. Hey, yo, I'm out here embracing it. Rest. Rest assured, shoulders are easy, no more stress, <laughs> no more 4 a.m. wake up calls. You gotta embrace it all. Oh, oh, wait, oh, wait. Guys, uh, we got um we got we got a very interesting show. It's a conference finals review. And um guys, you know, it's been tough to get these this group of people on a show on fast break. So it's gonna be a jam-packed show. I'm hosting, but I want y'all to know I'm still I'm still repping, I'm repping hard. Now, um, there's been some concerns about whether or not I would be able to chair this kind of engagement, you know, fairly. Uh, mm. Shaz, I'm still fine. Shaz, I just want you to know, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't come in here with any malicious intent. It's all, it's all above board, brother. It's all above board. Whatever, whatever, brother. Let's go. <laughs> Let's hear. You've got, you've got Let's... 50 minutes to convince us. Like the great Sunday Leo always says, let's go, brothers. Let's go, brothers. <laughs> okay, guys, let's kick off. Um, guys, so we're looking at the Western Conference. We're, we're looking at the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference finals today on fast break. We're going to kick off with the series that has already ended. I'm trying to choose a tone that's, that's you know, gentle. And I don't see like your approach. Uh, just oh, the approach. There's already malice in the approach. Okay, my, my bad. And I'm actually smiling too much. Let me relax a little bit. So we're going to kick off with the Western Conference Finals. And I'm going to jump straight to my boy, Shazza. Um, yeah, I want to know, right? Guys, we're not even going to talk about, we know that the series is currently, we know what's happened in the series. But mm-hmm. after game one, of the Denver Nuggets versus the LA Lakers Western Conference Finals. Genuinely, what were your thoughts after game one? Just 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 give me I want to know where you were after game one when you when you when you when you woke up or went to bed and we'll never be sure. What were your thoughts after game one? Um I thought we had a chance. That's the crazy part. And I in hindsight, I actually have to agree with Mike Malone. Like the media is so skewed. We talked about Rui Hachimura being like the Joker stopper. Um, little did we know, three games later, that is a complete lie. Um, I had hope, but um, one thing I've got to say, and probably the bias through everybody, I didn't know Nikola Jokic was this good. He is a straight-up baller. Um, yeah, I had hope after game one, and then game two, I had more hope. Game three, I was like, this is it. Oh, game four. Game four was even worse because, like, they sold me the dream. LeBron had 40 points, then nothing happened. And, um, yeah, it's a wreck. Yeah. And they're just a better team. I've, I've, it's, it's so terrible to say that as a competitor. So let's let's take it one step back, though, to to, to something you said about um, about the Nikola Jokic thing, right? It's about people saying that they didn't think he was, he was as good. One of the most interesting things was obviously people said, like, there's some people from the media that were just like, no, just be honest, y'all never watched the Kola Jokic, right? Like, 
that, and like that's a crazy crazy sentiment look i mean hey look i'm trying to throw no shade there's four dudes on here our three teams are big market teams let's not lie let's not lie we're big market teams but brian tell me so do you think that that's like do you think that that's like we might say the media hasn't watched Nikola Jokic, so we might say we didn't know Nikola Jokic was that good. But in terms of what the Lakers felt like going into that series, do you think that they actually felt like, yo, I'm I'm going to play Nikola Jokic, the two-time MVP? Do you think that like so you know what I mean? Media might not have yeah. watched it or yeah. known that Nikola was that good. But do you think that the Lakers came into game one or even the series thinking Nikola Jokic is Nikola Jokic? Yeah, so look, bro, in, in game, it's different, right? They have to check tape. They've played against them year in, year out when it's time for getting ready for the Denver versus Lakers game in season or Boston versus Lakers or whatever. They have to scout him and watch tape and they actually realize who they're going up against. So I think one of the, the, the media dudes asked KD after their game one loss against Denver, were you surprised to lose to? And he's like, bro, that's the best team in the NBA. They have a two-time MVP. Mm -hmm. We're not shocked. We know who they are. We know what they were going to bring. From our side, bro, I yo, <laughs> I never even watched. I, I think the last time I watched Denver play was in the bubble when I actually paid proper attention to them. But again, that's because they were against my Lakers. So I definitely, from a media perspective, I did not give them any attention. And that's kind of where I underestimated them all through game one, two, and three. I thought it was going to be Lakers in seven after game three. I, I really believed. And that was damn disrespectful. But I don't think it's that we, we didn't have access to their games. Like we generally use NBA TV. I just think they're a small market team and no one really thought that they would get this far from my angle, speaking for myself. I don't think they'd make such a deep run, but I'm quite sure LeBron James and the Lakers all knew who the problem was, especially after game one and two, where they were like, yeah, no, this is this not a fluke. This dude is really here to control the games. So I'm sure they knew everything they needed to know about him. It just couldn't stop Definitely. them. They weren't going to do it. Definitely. I mean, look, no doubt like so we all we all know from a lebron james perspective he's he's a savant right so he must have known the scouting report and we saw sure. the big adjustments after game one right so the focus of even the discussion was there has to be some kind of adjustment element to this faro as a supporter of a team that's interestingly and i'm going to throw out the celtics as a veteran team right because the experience they have as mm -hmm. the boston celtics I would consider you, everywhere I would, they've been yeah, there, guys, yeah. the truth is like no matter how young the Celtics are I think that they're an experienced team so as a fan of an experienced team right there was a general trend going into and I'm still speaking in the Western Conference now yeah people generally the sentiment of who I would have backed to start off the 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 playoffs and I mean I was obviously I was straight up Golden State Warriors and my biggest reason for that was I just generally believe championship caliber or people who've won before if you ask me just bet between one before versus not one before in a series i'm always gonna bet one before like a team that has won a championship before with with the mm -hmm. with the la lakers you had i mean lebron james who's i mean um a winner across the board he's, he's got four rings for going into that series genuinely speaking as a boston celtic from the outside looking in sitting with a team with that kind of level of experience who would yeah. you have Prior to the series, who would you have bet on? I was still gonna bet on the Nuggets, and oh, he I'll tell you why. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. No, 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 let me tell you because this, on the 9th of May, I wish I wish you could have these screenshots like up on the screen. On the 9th of May, I tweeted. I said, "Look, this series has been cute," and I was talking about the Laker and the Golden State series. I said, "This series has been cute. The hype about the hype about to die down when people realize real basket is being played on the other side of the West." This was on the 9th of May. Because yep. I watched the Nuggets I and Phoenix play. I play. I watched that entire series. I watched the two series before that as well. And the thing about the Nuggets is that the Nuggets, everything revolves around Jokic, yes, and he can hurt you on the offensive end. But the pieces that he has, the, with him, pieces. the, way, the way that those guys run their Bruh. offense, look, you have to think <laughs> about it. Think about it rationally because people, everyone here has basketball IQ. Nikola Jokic is not the most mobile dude, right? So how are the Nuggets putting up 125 a night, 120 a night? And this guy is not, it's not like Nikola is like dropping 40 every night. Yes, sure. he's running his triple doubles, but the way that that guy dictates the floor is what kills you in a game because you can't sag off of him. He will shoot on you, right? You have to stay up on him. He can make any pass at any time, anywhere, anyhow. He can take you to the three-point line. He can take you to the mid-range. He can take you down to the post. He doesn't have to do it himself. 
The only reason I gave Phoenix a chance in the previous series was because D Book was just going crazy. And the second he went mid to par, that was it. So coming into this series, for me, the crucial thing for um for 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 the Lakers was that the guard core, the guard core was really, really important. Yes, everyone was talking about AD, but I always felt like you yes, and oh, and after game one, everyone was saying, Oh, we got a plan for Jokic, it's all over. And I'm like, okay. It doesn't have to be Jokic. And I tweeted again after game one. I said, do not give Jamal Murray life. Don't give the bubble boy life. And what He's happened? He's having the, one of the best yeah. turnouts in this conference final. Y'all gave him life. And the thing yeah. is, bro, like everyone says, oh, oh Jamal guess. Murray, he, it was him in the bubble was just like, I'm like, bro, he, he's shown it to you on the biggest stage. Yes, it was the bubble, but he's done it before. And you gave him the platform to do it, you know? Like, Look, and no disrespect to, to AR, shout out to, to Reeves and all of that. Like, you know, respect to the role players at the Lakers who managed to step up and, and, make, and make these games into as competitive as they were. But I won't lie, man, that Dennis showed a crucial, crucial key point in how the thing just ended up splitting up. Like Dennis Schroeder needed to be locked down and hold things down. Like he, he had to, and he didn't. AD, I can give him some grace because he's needed on the offense end as well. Oh, like, we go, I wasn't... No, we go, we go, I wasn't... Oh, 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 just, you've names. got to give... We you've got to hold some names. chats. We go, we, we go <laughs> get into the names. <laughs> yeah, 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 anyway, we cut things short. I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked. To, that's to me kind okay. of shocked. Okay, I hear you. I, I want us to get into a bit of the names, right? Let's get into some of the... And, guys, we need a power specs. We're going to start at Denver, and we're going to speak on Denver because it's important that we speak on Denver. Yeah. On no, Forrest's no, point right. around Jamal Murray. You know, let me say this. So, in that Suns and Nuggets series, the reason I would have... I, I, going into the series, I would have actually bet on the Lakers. Another reason was, when seeing what KD and Book were getting against Denver's defense, it felt like... It felt like... It felt like Denver... Denver just needed, if, if you had a better defensive team with the same yep. kind of offensive output, you could beat them. You know what I mean? So that's why I, I didn't know that Denver could also defend at the rate that they that, that they were defending as they did in the series. But I want to start at the Jamal Murray conversation. And Farrow, you're 100% correct. In the bubble, oh, it was boy. quite shocking. Like oh, he, he, he did, he, he, oh, played, he played bro. way Pretty above bro. what Ooh. we would have. Yo, you know? Ooh. And Jamal Murray's nice. Like he's nice. In terms of Three-point shooting, that was unique. <sighs> unique in this series that I felt he shot the ball. I say this with a pinch of salt. Right. Better I than Steph Curry going. shot. Steph Curry is, bro. That big release. It was there. Yeah, he made it look stepless. That was so stepless, yeah. right? So, guys, tell me, when you were watching Jamal Murray play, what would you have, like... So, I mean, look, in one, I don't believe like anyone would have said, yo, we really need to be worried about this. You might you might assume he's going to return to some kind of mean. But tell me, from your side, Shazo, what would you have done or believed like, okay, this is like, is there anything different you would have done to Jamal Murray considering what the Lakers did to Steph Curry in the series before? Or, and I want to put this in your mind, Mm-hmm. Well, was the pick, was was it because it's a Jamal Murray yeah. pick and roll? Pick and roll. So and that's that's the roll. difference. <laughs> that's the difference between the series we played before. The roller wasn't that much of a threat, bro. Those two superstars and and Charles Barkley brought it up. Those two so, superstars balance each other so well, bro. There are games when when Nikola Jokic maybe not gonna get a touch. He's a bit gassed. They're just saying, Yo, Nikola, you roll, and if you gamble, chops. Jamal Murray going to sink it. Um, and we've got to put respect on that. We actually had to look at Jamal Murray and say, you might be the star. We, we might just have to, we might have to just push up on you. And when we push up, he's saying, yo, one dribble, let me float it. Let me get to the line. Let me, if you're going to sag off, let me hit you with this jumper. It was so clinical. It was real pick and roll. I, I have, I don't know what more we could have done. We, we sent the same matchups we sent against Golden State, but when he got going, he was like, let's go. And because of that disrespect on his shoulders, he was like, I need to finish these guys off. So, Jamal Mamba guy, mentality. He had Mamba yeah, mentality. He said, he said, yo, I'm <laughs> taking you home in four. Get the sweep. Yo, let me tell you what my no, thing was. Right? Like, yeah. I, I understand Jamal Murray. I, I understand that that dude was back and we didn't 
we couldn't have played. Also, I hate a rookie head coach because it took us three games to make an adjustment that actually worked. And then fourth hold quarter, that, Jamal, though, Jamal, Jamal, Jamal. hold that one for a bit. My nah, bad. I also, I also hate Ro- a rookie coach. Those yeah. role players, Faro touched on it a little bit earlier. Yo, Aaron Gordon, Kentavious Caldwell, Kentavious Caldwell, oh, Caldwell Bruce Brown, that Brown boy from the Michael bench. Porter Jr. Michael those, Porter those Jr. Guys, no one could guard him. Guys, you know nobody. What? Guys, I'm guys, thinking. Michael Porter Jr. Come on, man, come on. The whole series, yo, make shots. Oh, he's six ten. He's just a six ten. He's this small forward. He says, "Oh, I'm gonna shoot over you, Ar." Come no, here. bro. Those guys <sighs> were just doing the most important thing about a role player. Just make your shots, bro. Really, yeah, just make yeah. it. And those dudes were hitting every most of their open shots. They were sinking. You know, the time Aaron Gordon in game three and three four, they were like, nah, not him. Boy, hey, he Aaron said, Gordon, give me that walk on the three. Even Bruce back. Brown, boy. Even Bruce <laughs> said Brown. Like this. Every single, as soon as you plan for Jamal, I, Bruce, get involved. As soon as you plan for Jamal <laughs> and Bruce, I, KCP, you do your thing. As soon as you <laughs> dog, we only had four games and there was no amount of adjustments we could have made. That team had mm. a deep bench. And nobody knew, or I didn't know until until game four that you yeah, know and they are better yeah. than we are. They're actually just yeah. more well-rounded, more stars. Mm. They don't even need to work as hard on the defensive end, I think, because we also just look very stagnant. But I Denver was much better than us from game one, but it took me too long to realize. <laughs> Those guys deserve what they did to us. And they and are, just to piggyback on what Breezy's saying, like if you if you really think about that movement that we've just described, it's actually unguardable. Like if you think about it. Because Jamal comes off the pick, right? That's the first option. His first option is to go and score. Whether it's a mid-range floor, whether it's all the way to the rack. And if they cut him off, there's a kick out, there's a kick out to Nicola. Nicola can get an ISO, back it down into the post, shoot the three, or find someone else. The backslash is cutting to the rim, right? That's what that's what the role player's role becomes. If Jamal gets inside and he's stopped and you, you decide to crunch and put rim pressure, he can kick out to anyone else. So it doesn't matter what you do. And that's the first movement. Forget about that. He can drive in, kick it out. Then there's the rotation on the other side. People didn't see the secondary third movement. Quarter where they the took secondary step, movement, yeah. bro, where he drives yeah. in, right? Doesn't get it. He kicks out to the corner. When he kicks out to the corner, Leokic is diving down to the post on the other side. They rotate. He goes, ah, oh, man downstairs. No wow. Give me basket. Yo, you know, <laughs> oh, my, bro, knew, delicious. Delicious basket, bro. I knew, oh. I knew when our producers got far on the show, he'd come in with some analytics and X's. And oh, see, that's my goal. <laughs> yeah, that's my our goal. resident <laughs> engine. Our resident <laughs> engineer coming with the ah, boys. I saw the guy drive, boy. And I said, ah, corner. You know what I mean? Yo, some of us just say pick. Some of us just say pick and roll. We say, oh, we going mano y mano. You know, mano y mano. No, no. Faro, Faro, you're so right. Like, guys, actually, Breezy and Faro, you guys are both right. The, the role-playing aspects of the Denver Nuggets is something I don't think we recognized. It makes me want to go back to the Phoenix series. I want to go re-watch those games. Where were they? I, when was all that? I, I, yes, because... Bro, and, yo, and I'm, it. we're going to get Insane. into it later where, <laughs> where we unpack the NBA Finals and what we think is going to happen. But I have to wonder... It's a bit of a haterade question. I have no shame. I'm putting it out there. What's your favorite thing? Did they have an incredible one series now, even across role players? This is why I need to go back and watch the Phoenix series to just check: is this has have we just been like I started this 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 segment with? Have we just been ignoring Denver, or yes. as in not watching them enough, or or did they have an incredible? Um, you know, series against the LA Lakers. I, 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 you know, I think genuine Liz, and this is when after we got swept, and people were saying, guys, this has been consistently the best team mm. in the NBA. You know, in the half you know, court, bro. In the half court, bro, which is the playoffs. And, the th- and and it goes back to you know, and we're probably gonna deal with this later about keeping that core no matter what happens, you know, and and going through training camps and and, and going through the battles because a lot of these players are players that went through the bubble, a couple of new pieces, but they went through those heartbreaks, and now they're in a position where now you've got a two-time final finals MVP, you've got a genuine scorer, but you got guys who are willing to play in their position in a great system. So for me, it's credit to them, and you know what as we had hope, but that's the number one seed. And they're the yeah, number look, one seed for a reason, and we had to respect that because they are so great look, boss. They, they beat us, right? They beat us in four, but I don't want to make it seem like... I don't want to now look in hindsight and say we never had a chance. Bro, those games were close. No, right? There was a time no, we were no, down 20, yeah. 20 something, and we were able to pull it back. There was a time we were up 15. Mm-hmm. They were able to pull it back. I, I really do believe they were... 
there were certain plays and positions that could have altered the momentum of the game and then the next game and the series. We weren't out of it by no, and that's also why I believed three games in that were coming back. Like we were, we could keep up with them. They just had more tank in the gas. They had more legs under them because they're also a whole lot younger, right? They can run for 48. And they were actually just better than us, but it wasn't necessarily 60-40. It was kind of 55-45 or 51-49. We were close. But what Jamal Murray said in the bubble last time, that look, if AD didn't hit that big jumper, they were winning that series. So I, I, mean, I, I don't think that's true, but you know, <laughs> there's an argument to be made there. There's an argument to be yeah. made there. Now, guys, I think it was incredible, West, incredible Western Conference. Um, I, I have no shame to say it. It came about in in quite an unfortunate event with my Golden State Warriors bowing out humbly. Um, I don't want to get into that. that. No, 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 no. Hey, yo, hey, yo, 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 one from each of you, and then we're moving over to the Eastern Conference. That's the deal I, I would like to move on to the Eastern Conference. This is a, oh, a, man, of, a man, man of mercy. A man of mercy. Uh, let's yes. keep it moving, you, man. Put the man out of his head. Okay, I will Russ. take questions from yeah. Brian. Uh, one question. Does it hurt you more that Golden State lost, or does it make you happier that the Lakers got swept? W which is... No, it hurts me more. It, it hurts me more than it hurts me more that Golden State lost because Brian, what I a have waste of a question. Please, don't really, bro. This is, really this is this is oh, I'm gonna keep oh, watch watch over oh. watch over. I needed to know. I've been needing to know, but shame. Les ain't been talking smack on Twitter. So no, you, you got another like, question. Okay. No, 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 this no, guy's cross no, examination no, is terrible. No, guys, guys, <laughs> it, did, it did look. I mean, I I actually want to throw out a quick Golden State Warrior take. The, the, the reason I felt it was significantly disappointing is one of the hardest things to do is after you win a championship, keep your core together. We all know that, right? I mean, except for Boston, Faro, y'all been sitting with an exceptional core and I'm telling you the day coming. But we all know like to keep a core together after a ring is tough. Golden State kept maybe seven of the, seven of the same guys from last season. To me, that was why it was the biggest disappointment. This was quite unique in that sense. That a team can keep a court together like that and still your boy that. punch Jordan Poole. We know what time it is. Ah, but I thought maybe they could work through it. Maybe like you know, I don't know. You get bullied by your brother or something. But anyway, there's a lot of moves to be made there, guys. Let's move over to the Eastern Conference. I want everyone to know we scheduled this show with some speculation. I, don't, I have no shit. I want to let the audience know. We <laughs> scheduled this done. show with some speculation. <laughs> that who knows where we could be, right? Nonetheless, let's move over to the Eastern Conference where we've got the Boston Celtics versus the Miami Heat. Versus the Miami Heat and Himmy Butler. Oh my goodness. Shout out to that hit me. Shout out to that hit me. Shout out to that hit me. Farah, I'm going to start you off. And everyone, you must. This show will wow. air after the game. So I'm going to throw it to Farah and see if he is a false prophet. Farah, tell me, going into game five, what is your. What, what, do, you, what, what do you believe will happen? Just throw, look into your crystal ball. Let me just, let me I know just you're a man of data. This green juice. <laughs> yeah, sip that green juice. Let me tell you guys, Farrow's a man of data, a learned man. So let's yeah, Farrow, look into your crystal ball. Tell me, what are you what, what do you see happening in game five of the Eastern Conference Finals? Like I said, guys, this is gonna air afterwards. So, you know, let's see yeah, if Farrow cool. profit. Talk to us. Let me I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little bit of a preview, then I'm gonna get to game five, right? Because I feel like I context understand. is important for whatever I'm gonna say. The first thing is I am extremely disappointed in the Boston Celtics. That's the first thing. Um, not because, like, you know, as a Celtics fan, you know that it's going to be turbulence, right? We didn't clean up the Hawks and we, when we, we, we played with our food with the Hawks. We played with our food in Philly. I expected us to play with our food with Miami, but not to the extent that this series has gone down. Like, I cannot fathom how Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown can go four 
can, can jump into the fourth quarter and finish the fourth quarter with no field goals in any scenario anyway. It doesn't matter how many, what the data is saying, what the numbers are saying. I know that the Celtics finished games poorly, but that's, that's dude, that, like, you're cutting yourself off at the ankles, right? And Jimmy Butler has been personally my favorite player in the playoffs, like from the beginning. I said, he's got that, that dog in him that like, I'm going to take your lunch money. And the thing about the Celtics, I don't know who mentioned cheese boy basketball. I used to hate that term, but now I'm going to fold and say the Celtics are out there playing cheese boy Looking basketball. like Michael, because Michael has and, basket. And I'll, tell you, and I'll tell you what it is. And I'll tell you what it is. There's this sequence where Tatum, both, both Tatum and Brown, two sequences, they drive to the rim, they blow a layup, right? They think they're fouled. They sit there for like 10 seconds complaining to the ref. Gabe, Gabe, Vincent is on the, uh, Gabe Vincent on the other side, dropping a three. Caleb Martin out here shooting threes, going out in transition. Bro, Jimmy Butler, we, he, he doesn't need a second invitation to take your lunch money, bro. And if, we're going, if, if I go back to the numbers, Liz, and I come into game five, right? The reason why the Celtics won game, and, and, and this is like, it sounds basic, but it's, it's actually, it's as simple as that. We managed to get two field goals each minimum from Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. He's gonna put the ball through the hoop. That thing is scary. scary. In the game, bro. Oh, you're, in are you referring one. to the fourth quarter. You're referring to the yeah, fourth yeah, quarter. Yeah, in the fourth quarter. Yeah. The fourth quarter. Yeah. Okay. In game one, right? The Celtics won every single corner, every single quarter, except for the third, where we lost. But I think it was like 46, 12 or something, something, something stupid like that. All you have to do is call a timeout, Joe. Call a timeout, Joe. Call a timeout, I Joe. <laughs> I hate the call, a damn, call a damn timer. And it's, it's, it's the level, look, I, I can understand where you're having off game and stuff, but uh, it, like it, it just, the disparity in the way that the Celtics play is hilarious to me. Like you actually can't support this team and think, ah, back the numbers. If I back the numbers, the Celtics should be game four, should have happened every single other, every other game. And that should have been the series, right? Because the talent disparity is just too large. All of a sudden, Malcolm Brogdon has gone cold on offense. He can't make a bucket. Oh, and then it, the news comes out that he had a, uh, a semi-tear in, 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 in a tendon in his arm. So pinch him, coach. You know what I mean? Sam Hauser hasn't yeah. touched the floor. And it's th these adjustments where you're coming up against the best coach in the league by far in, in Coach Spall. And the Ooh. thing I love about Spallstra is he will expose you. He will expose the Miami Heat from upstairs all the way down to freaking Udonis Haslam has that dog in them. From Pat Riley all the way yeah. down to Haslam. We will so, take your lunch money. So so can I say, let's let's take it back to the cheese boy basketball term. Shout out to Lissetti DeVio who came up, who coined that term here on Fast Break. You know, <laughs> on Fast Break, we've we've had a very up and down review of Boston. It's been there's been there's been a, there was a year where we talk, I think we spent Everybody. 30 minutes on an episode tearing them up. Then Boston do what they did last year, which people were like, you know, hey, you know, this is really, this is progress. Defense. Boston, the season, you know, come, they're still playing exceptional basketball. But at the end of the day, I think what Faro said here, it's that, it's also, it's, it's the cheese boy basketball and then the guy that got that dog in him. And like, I guess that, I guess, and you know, let me throw this to you, Shaz. It's like, if you're sitting there and you're choosing, you know, you you gotta you know how they love to throw you with pick a superstar to bowl the round. I'm gonna say I'm talented as hell. Like I can ball. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown to me, I mean, you know, guys on a pure basketball level, man, those guys can play. Jimmy Butler coming with he's coming with his heart and his soul. He's coming with the dog. Shazo, tell me, when you're looking at what's going on, what is it about Jimmy B? What is it? What the is it about Jimmy Butler? It's the oh, spirit of a, the spirit of a champion. <laughs> it has to be the spirit of a champion. And also, guys, Pat Riley and Eric Spolstra, they don't really care about the regular season. They're like, give us a shot. And all these guys, let's not even lie, all these random people that play for the Miami Heat, those guys all got hot. Those guys would defend. Those guys going to scrap. bro. Out of nowhere, now guys are playing. They're not even playing for contracts. They play for like random things. Why? Like <laughs> legacy. Uh, so, <laughs> bro, and it's the truth, bro. And, and like, it's like the yeah. scariest <sighs> thing about Miami Heat. Like, we don't know what motivates them. Jimmy lost yesterday. He said, All right, we lost. I'm going to drink a glass years. of wine. 
and and then we we'll have two beers. I'm gonna see y'all in game five. I'm like, what type of interview is this, bro? He but gets me, in your head, bro. For me, Jimmy, Jimmy's always had that had that energy since he kicked that 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 first team in that first team out in the in the Wolves in that practice game. And that's yeah, all yeah. Joel Embiid really wants right now. He's like, just give me a guy who's gonna win and put on the line. And the fact that he's this close, I I, I think he's gonna get over the line in Game Five. But give me Jimmy Butler all the time because he's gonna give you a hundred percent. I and still he's disagree with that, man. He's time. not gonna be a diva. He, that's the crazy thing. He's not a diva. He just wants to win. Look, with, Jason, Vincent, going, with oh. Vincent going down, I think the numbers might just kick them. That's 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 Jason, my yeah Jason, yeah. Look, that, 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 on a cheese boy tip. That's a tough one. But breezy, I want to hear your take, man. I feel like you got something something unique to say about specifically Jimmy. But let's let's hear from breezy. Breezy, Bro, Eastern look, Conference Finals, what's your take? Jimmy has always been a significantly great role player. As soon as he moved into the starters minutes, as soon as he moved into the, you know, as soon as he got the keys to the city of Miami, he became, you know, Jim. I just still don't believe that he's, I can't believe, you know, I've seen it happen and he's actually doing it and maybe I should actually buy into it. But this playoff Jimmy thing, it's starting to feel like a real thing, hey? In the playoffs, he starts shooting it more is. through, he starts making more attempts. His defense is already great in season, just seems to become better. But also that dog in him starts to show now. Like he's all over the court now. You're actually shouting at players. And one blown possession is too many. And that, I think we saw a clip of that. Far and I might have seen the same clip on Twitter. One blown possession is too much. And he's coming down on guys, which kind of, that's, that's what you need from your best player. But I don't think that he's the best player in the series. And I don't think that Miami is the best team in the series. Obviously, Boston has lost three games straight. But Boston has some other stuff going on. I still firmly believe that Jason Tatum is the best player in this series by far. He can keep up defensively and he's short, head and shoulders above anybody else offensively. If he just makes some fourth quarter shots, which to Faro's point, his first fourth quarter bucket was in game four in an elimination game, which is scary. But I really don't believe that it's done, hey? I don't believe this series ends in game five. I think Jason Tatum's gonna go lights out, maybe 35, 40 points, push it to five games. And I think what Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart said, don't let them get what. Also, this game gave Vincent Gloss a big one, right? Because yeah, it was Tyler that's, Hero that's who true. fell out and he was bringing in 20 points a game. And now yeah. Gabe Vincent, the series has been quite mad. Now they've lost a starting shooter and a backup shooter. So that's, mm. that, those, those are some serious bodies. And that's but again, it's, 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 and, and Brio's right, though. Go I just ahead, want to say one ahead, thing, go. though. But go, go, Brio's go. point is actually similar to something that, that Farrell said earlier. The one thing you do have to admit, guys, even, even just basics, like the talent disparity is big. You you oh. you cannot say, you cannot like I'm saying the dog in him is Bach and like you know Eric Spolstra da, da, or everything about man. You still cannot even even with the owl, even if even if the heat continue, you cannot look at these teams and say that the Heat are more talented than the Boston Celtics. No. Or can no you ways. like don't the don't Miami the Boston Celtics have the sixth man of the year? No way. I don't yeah, think the Miami Heat the are Celtics. better than Boston as a team. I think Boston is just a better team with some locker room issues, but they are better than Miami by far, but in my opinion. One you gotta win them. One thing, one thing, one thing though that 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 sort of narrows that narrows that gap that people aren't really talking about. And again, it goes back to Brio's Brio's point of I hate a rookie coach. If you look at field goal mm. attempts between the two mm. teams, right? Eric Spolster is playing a game of numbers. The Celtics are not shooting the mid-range at all. Miami is living in the mid-range. Jimmy Butler, that baseline mid-range jump, it's water. Bam out of bio, top of the key, water. The Celtics uh, yeah. are, and, 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 and the Celtics are living and dying by the three, like you saw in game four. The only reason we won that game is because we, we, we outscored them on the three-point line, but I think something should be like 16, 20 points, right? And we had more field goal attempts. But the thing is, when you have a cold shooting night, and, and, and the thing that triggered this in game four was there was a play where Jason Tatum cut baseline and then he, he curled up to, and he shot a mid-range. He shot like an elbow jump shot. And then the Celtics went on like a, an 11-0 run straight after that, right? Because all of a sudden you have to cater to the mid-range. Coach needs to see this. Set the pick and roll up at the top. Jason Tatum's driving into three guys. Pull up and shoot the mid-range, bro. The second you do that, things will now open up because the second he shot the mid-range, all of a sudden, Market Smart has open jump shots. All of a sudden, Grant Williams is open it opens the up corner. for everybody. And, and, and my issue is that our coach, Joe Mazzula, is too reactive. 
Bro, if you have the juggernauts that you have in the Celtics, set up one play. And if Miami cannot stop that one play, beat them down with that play until they figure it out. Joe, Joe wants it's, to take a time out home. It's insane to me. It's insane Joe, to me. Joe the, the, Rob, the Rob Williams. Yeah, the Rob Williams in the starting lineup thing. Tatum and Brown have come out and said, this, is, this guy is the key to, for us defensively. He goes, yeah, yeah, game three, yeah, yeah. takes him out the starting lineup, puts flipping Derek, Derek White in there. We get, blown, we get blown out, never recover in the game. Rob Williams in there can make it, can make it, can make, can make a difference defensively. A huge difference. Oh, I want to ask you something. Sorry, you're, you're talking. I started to interrupt, but you're referring to a lot of coaching issues. Do you miss Ime? Do you miss Udonka? Hell yeah, he does. Hell yeah. I, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, hold on. Hold on. With, with the whole Ime Udoka thing, right? It's in the past. It's all gone. It's, it's finished. We didn't, we, do, we didn't need... Ime Udoka also had a torrid time during the regular season that people didn't talk about. He also got cleaned out in the finals. Didn't make enough ju- adjustments in stiff. You, re- you remember he was out there playing that drop coverage with Al Horford. Was that his first year? Yeah, that was his first year. It was his first year as head coach. Head coach. Oh, he was out there busy. He, he was out there busy. <laughs> yeah, four coaches in four years. Anyway, out there putting Al Horford in the drop coverage the whole series, letting Steph get whatever the dang hell he wants. So Ime is like, he's, he's, not, he's not the recipe here. But the guys that I hold accountable are the two guys, the two all NBA players in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. You need to realize and identify that this rookie coach is not making enough adjustments. Therefore, it is on us. I cannot have Marcus Smart shooting more field goal attempts than the two superstars in the whole fourth quarter. That makes absolutely no sense to me. And look, guys, I'm not asking you for just play average, bro. Just play yeah. average. Play normal. Score in the fourth quarter, I guess. How right? are you getting beat? Yeah. How are you getting beat by a high school zone? Two three zone. Two three zone. Professional basket. You can't <laughs> get a two three zone. Uh, don't hate on the zone. Put, put a, put a man in the middle of the zone, turn and shoot. What's I'm, your I'm moving. Oh, come I'm on, moving. I'm moving. I want to. I want to give a quick shout out to one guy. We don't speak of Bam is having a great series, guys. Yeah, bro. he's out there. He's out there, rebounding, scoring, yeah, dunking, changing the momentum of the game. I want to. We never give Bam love. We always call him a. He's scrub. been an issue in too many series, and now he's coming through yeah. in the biggest of them all. Yes, yeah, I'm with player. Brian as well. My problem with Bam is I have too much data of being pretending, being and doing subpar. That's doing the thing. That, that's subpar, that's why I'm bro. That's yes. quiet, that's Bam, why Bam I do, I'm scared to give Bam anything new, right? But what I do want to know, though, and this is an interesting question, right? Guys, this thing of the Miami Heat, and, and Shaz, you alluded to it, right? Shaz is like, yo, the Miami Heat um, don't really care about the regular season. My problem with that is you were the eighth seed. Fine. I don't buy that at They've all. Had, I don't yeah, buy you know that what I mean? I, I don't buy yeah. it, and I don't like it either, right? I'm, I, 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 am an, I, I can agree that, like, you know, you should save your best for the playoffs, particularly individually as a player. Like, if you but can qualify throughout a season, don't. Yeah, do throughout a season, you want to make sure guys are there. But you yeah. can't be flirting with, I maybe didn't make Play the playoffs, in, right? Nah, no way. When bro. evidently no you're actually, yeah. you actually have the minerals to beat yeah. teams legitimately. So, what do you guys think of that? Like, culturally, do you think that, like, that, that's no way to run a franchise? I'm so not going to look here's at this what and I say, think, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. certain big players, certain players don't care what seating they're in, but they don't necessarily say we don't care for a good seed, right? If you put like LeBron, dominant players, LeBron James, Giannis, uh, certain big name Kobe, we don't care what seed we're in. We just have to win four games. But it's undeniable that the higher up your seed is or the worse your seeding, the tougher the road. Miami now had to go through the Bucks. Who did they get, get in the second round? They also had a bit of, and now they've got Boston. They had to go to number one, two. It, it, they just avoided Philadelphia as well. I just think it's ridiculous. It's, it's one thing to not care where you land, but you still want a comfortable seating. I'd say maybe top four, top five at worst. You don't want to risk it in a one and done playing game. Nobody wants that. So I don't buy that. They don't care about their seating. Once you're in the playoff, you don't care who you got. Sure, but you definitely mm-hmm. want to make a comfortable seating so you have an easy. Yeah, I, no, no I have to agree. With, yeah, I have to agree with Brian. I mean. You want to be comfortable. You want to have the, you know, the home, the home, the home ground advantage in these type 100%. of situations. In case we go game seven, now at least we're playing at home. And you know, all of these things they do matter. You know, um, so but both those teams that played in the play and went so deep in the in the playoff run, that just takes, shows you the caliber of you know. Let's just get to the playoffs. You know, it, it, those teams were out of the when we were having all these shows. 
These teams mm. were out. We had counted them out. They're like, it's a wrap. Yeah, but also those legs. I don't know how these guys are going to do it. And with that with that amount of in- intensity going from like basically after the All Star game to where they are right now, it's yeah. I, you still need to get a good seeding, Les. I'm um, with the good yeah. seeding stuff. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and, I, and just to add yeah, on, to yeah, that, yeah. Quick, mm. like the the whole Miami only cares about like the playoffs, which is true, but. In the 2023-2022-2023 season, like Miami shot 26% from three. You don't do that on purpose. You don't go from like the previous season being the one seed to all of a sudden being the eight seed. Like they were genuinely, genuinely, genuinely struggling. Like them making yeah. the play in and them coming alive in the play in was literally their lifeline. And they, they, yeah. one thing I will say about Miami is not necessarily the, yeah, we don't care about the regular season. Or all this. I think Miami are the biggest opportunists in the league. Like. Those guys sniff an opportunity. And, and bro, and it, it pains me to say it, but I just wish the Celtics had like 40% of that opportunism, you know? Stop yeah. relying on your talent. Stop relying on all of these other things because you give Miami a sniff, they will take it. I remember straight off the game one, I, I, I said, I was like, losing two at home is not beyond you. Do not think you're just going to come back and win the next game because Jimmy Butler doesn't care about, okay, we got one nothing he wants both he wants to get rid of you as quick as possible there's a play yeah. where um uh, uh what's his name max Struess didn't close out on a three that jason tater made in game oh four. he lost his mind they oh, called Jimmy a time out one play they called a time one out. play is too many one, one blown possession is too assistant many. coach it. on his head jimmy butler on his coach just do your job grips him he said yeah. do your job there yeah. we don't have that that accountability that level of I've got to That's get true. mine now. I need to scrounge for the scraps that I can get. We just don't have that. Hey, yeah. Like, from, a le- from a leadership perspective, no doubt, I think Jimmy Butler is actually quite unique. And, and he uses a bit of the same friction leadership that I think people would refer to back in the day around like guys like Kobe and stuff. I was about to say but, Kobe. Like, mm, yeah. He has that he's, dog in him. He's your best yeah. player and he's in his prime. Yeah. Like it's the best combination yeah. of everything you need i think i was about to yeah. go directly to kobe as well yeah he, he and he also gonna holler at you you know you're making it yeah. personal you're not right? shy to make it yeah. Noise. yeah nonetheless gents we yo we got we we still gonna we we're we gonna be on screen a little bit we're gonna be on screen a little bit you know after the nba finals but shout out your numbers shout out your predictions look into the crystal ball who is the false prophet of the day go ahead the Final. nba me. finals predictions let's hear it Yo, this one's going to air before the finals, right? So we're going to have you on tape telling us who you think is going to... I and guess you have to give important me... for Faro, huh? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> right? <laughs> but guys, so you got to throw out two predictions, right? I want you to tell me, the Eastern Conference Finals, Boston and Miami, how many games is that going to end in? And then tell me, the and then obviously which team wins, and then your NBA Finals predictions, and who is taking home the Larry O'Breezy, Shazo... Starting with uh, me, mine is, mine is, you know, I hate to ever change that tagline, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> Hemi, but- Hemi Butler, Hemi Butler closes it, closes it tonight. You know, he knows that he can't give Boston any amount of hope. He has to close the gate because if they get two, it's going to be beautiful for the audience. But Jimmy closes it today. And because... I want Jimmy to get this ring. And I don't want us to have any conversations about who might be top five greatest centers of all time. Jimmy Butler wins this thing and basketball history is preserved as it needs to be. We don't need no damn Denver winning no damn ring. And then they're going to say which number 15 jersey gets retired. I hated that. And that's my take. You know, they said that. So Jimmy Butler in five. You retire Carmelo Anthony's jersey and he go wear number 12 or something. Shout out, shout out, shout out. Also, shout out to Carmelo Anthony in retirement. That's our boy. That's our boy. Breezy, I'm going to throw it over to you. Farah, we have to end with you because, you know, it's big for you. Brian, give us your numbers. Eastern Conference Finals, who's going through and how many games? And then your NBA Finals prediction. You know what, bro? I see Jimmy Butler. Hey, I see him. I, I see the man. Boston and seven. Boston in seven games. Um, I just, I really think that they are the better team. And I really do believe that Jason Tatum has nothing to lose but to shoot the damn ball in the fourth quarter. If he's going out, he's going out having done everything he possibly can. And I believe he'll demand that rock in the fourth between him and JB. 
And I just think that this Gabe Vincent issue is a bit of a leg up. And if they get two, all they need is one more. If they get three, all they need is one more at home. So I really do believe that Boston, you, you know, I, I think I'd love an upset. I'd hate for Boston to win the championship, but I really just believe they're the better team. I hate Nuggets in 5A. Eh? No, no matter who the who makes it through to the next round, Nuggets going to win the championship in, in five yeah, games. Right. <laughs> no one can do anything about the Joker. No one can do anything about Jamal. And there's no one big enough that can handle him an entire game. And all these those guys we talk about. Aaron Gordon, MP, ah, yeah, it's too much. Nuggets in five in the NBA Finals. And they got to retire that game. They really. already got two MVPs. They don't give that. They hang that thing up. Man. Nuggets in five in the Finals. I breezy, I breezy. Faro. Talk to me, dog. Um, Let me take one more step of this green juice before before I give you this. Let's just. Yeah, what do you think the Celtics are gonna do? I'm. This, I mean, I'm a man of numbers. And... It's funny because I'm a man of numbers, right? But okay. when it comes to the Celtics, those numbers mean absolutely nothing, and and that's that's why I'll never I'll never count them out because no one's ever come back from three 0 no, ever, ever. And and I'll tell you why. All it takes is you losing one quarter. And I think the Celtics yeah, between yeah. now and the game seven, a game seven, the Celtics are going to lose a quarter. Like yeah. because 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 we live and die by the three, it's just going to be sad, and that's how it goes. I do though think that game five, because of the injury, because you know some life has been reinjected, and because I'm wearing this jersey, the Celtics home statement went, uh, we're five and one in this jersey. So I think we go home, we win this, and then when we go back to Miami, man. It's going to look, and this is the sad part. The Celtics are probably going to start off well create a lead and then it's going to get to this, those KG moments and the crowd's going to get involved. Hemi Butler is just going to pull up. It might even be that buzzer beater home sender. You know that like buzzer beater he missed last year in game seven? I feel yeah, like yeah. the basketball gods are going to have the reverse smile on them in this one and it's just going to be clutch, clutch moments, clutch points in game six and I'm packing my bags and I'm heading to Cancun. That's what I think. You'll find personally. us out there. You'll find us out there. Yeah, worry, man. man. <laughs> and, and then the Nuggets hit obviously. me up with your... Ah, then it's Nuggets oh, and you're four. saying clean. I'll even, I'll clean, even say Nuggets clean, and clean. four. Yeah, I'll even oh, say Nuggets sweet. and four. Oh, sweet. Get ready for Because, Boston because, boys, the, right? because the, worst, the worst part about the Nuggets is the Nuggets role players are still more talented than Miami. But the, the thing about yeah. the Nuggets role players is that the Nuggets role players play percentage basketball and they also play aggressive... I don't take anything for granted basketball. So everything, everything Miami has, I'm sorry. Spirit of Pat Gabe, Riley. Gabe Vincent, Let's go, brother. Caleb, Caleb Martin, those guys are not shooting 60% in the next round. Yeah. They're not shooting 100%. 60% in the next round. It's, it's, it's over. Nuggets are taking Jimmy it. Butler scoring 125 points. Y'all know oh. my guy. <laughs> oh, I mean, yo, yo, yo. I uh, well, I'm gonna throw out my, my my predictions. So I'm aligned with Faro in the Eastern Conference. I do think this next game, I think Boston salvaged some pride. Um, they win this game at home, then they go back to Miami, and it's curtains. I, like you said, it takes one quarter for them to lose. I think that Miami one will possession play well at home. even, bro. Like yeah, they can't you know what I mean. Like anything. being three games up, everything you do has is high risk. So I think that I think definitely Miami close it out in six. Where Boston salvaged some 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 sort of pride. Can't wait to see what they you know they look like next season. Feel the same way about my Golden State Warriors. NBA Finals. I am you know so it's gonna be the Miami Heat obviously versus the Den- Denver Nuggets and it's the Denver Nuggets in six. I think Jimmy will Jimmy will like put up a fight, but <laughs> Denver Nuggets in six. Shaz, it's gonna yeah. be no, so out of sad. out of respect, Alex, out of respect for yeah, Jimmy Butler. I, guys, I'm hearing guys, you. I'm hearing you. Yeah, yeah. Like I think Jimmy Butler will. We win dreamers, win. man. We dreamers. Oh. Pat Riley, you know what it is. This is this is for one Laker. You know we got to do it, Pat. You've got high hopes, high hopes. I'm gonna, and also, <laughs> guys, if Himmy wins this this ring, oh man, you know basketball will be so him. happy. Yeah, know. look, guys, a Jimmy Butler ring really, it just, you know, it's kind of a feel good cle- story. It cleanses the NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, 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 less than, it's less than the Premier League. It's that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, you know? but, but that's my prediction. Gentlemen, thank you so much for jumping on Fast Break. Everyone, thank you for watching. Please like, follow, subscribe. Fast Break essay on all channels on all platforms shout out to you we will see you after the basketball africa league finals
Peace. Hey, fire away. Good luck, Faro. Good luck, blood. You know. That's it from us for this episode. Thanks for watching, listening, and being part of the conversation. Don't keep it to yourself, though. Share it with your friends and family, and let's all engage on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Our handle is at FastBreakSA on all platforms. To keep up with our latest episodes, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again, and we'll see you again on the next episode.